All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from, well, actually a rainy San Diego, but I guess it is only the first couple of days of the year. So we could, we, we'll tolerate a little rain here um, until we start demanding our money back if the sun doesn't come back out again. And today I am delighted to be joined by James Mack, Mac Parkland, keynote speaker, author of the Unopened Gift series and Mindshift and Performance Coach. For over 25 years, Mac has been helping leaders and their teams uh, access breakthrough performance and results. And what we're going to talk about today is mindset. So, um, uh, James, maybe start off with kind of a definition of mindset because mindset's a, 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 I, I've seen it now it's funny there's certain phrases and terms that have, have suddenly come into vogue and they're being thrown around everywhere you know mindset is one authenticity is another and my all-time favorite now is uh lean into I I, I just uh, I went to a conference recently and every presenter used the term lean into we need to lean into this and I'm thinking oh my goodness how original are you lot um but anyway so with all these buzzwords and all these things going around can you kind of bottom line it for mindset yeah John listen thank you man and to spend the early part of 2023 with you is a pleasure so thank you for the invitation yeah I'll try to keep it simple maybe because I'm a simple man but mindset is the uh, consistent ability for us to think about what we think about. And I know from, let's uh, say, more from errors and mistakes than from anything else, you know, we have lots of thoughts each day. And it's said that there are between 50 or 60,000 thoughts a day. That makes it about 2,500 thoughts an hour. That's about 43 thoughts a minute. And it is moving. And you and I are having a conversation today, John, and the average person, and let's say we're all average can speak about 200 words a minute and the average mm -hmm. person can consume 500 words a minute and we're often distracted. So to hold someone's attention is very difficult. So the mindset is the deliberate practice of stopping momentarily and it's all moment to moment anyways, to think about what we're thinking about because the brain is set up to protect us and statistically the thoughts that are gonna come to us are negative or disempowering so as to not necessarily believe everything you think, but to think about what you think about, let some of those things pass through and focus on intentionally what you want to be thinking about. Yeah, no, I did, there's great definition. Thank you. And and I think the the interesting thing is whenever whenever I talk about this subject with anyone is uh, we live in a strange culture today. Obviously, we live in the culture, uh, you know, people say they're the busiest they've ever been. I always counter that with are you or are you just more distracted than you've ever been? Because I think if you look at it, you'll find it's distraction, not addition, you know, because, um, but people are so distracted. So to take time out to think about their own thoughts is almost counterculture. So, you know, we have to encourage people to actually take some, some quiet time, which just people just don't seem to do. You know, Joe, what's interesting as you say that is I often ask people, in the work that we do, and that's with executives at the C-suite level or it's professional athletes, I'll stop people as I occasionally stop myself and ask the individual, what is it you're trying to get to? Or what is it you're trying to accomplish? Or the phrase that's probably been used too often is what is the future self that you're trying to get to? Now, I don't know that we ever arrive any place. We live into it, right? Mm -hmm. It's always now and it's always today. And I, I tell you that sometimes I find distraction and maybe um, busy being busy uh, is an unintended outcome of lack of clarity. Where is it mm. precisely I want to go? And maybe if I'm really clear on what that is, maybe I'm afraid I can't do it. So if I can't get to it, maybe I don't have to worry about it now because there's that future version of me that maybe someday I'll get to it. And that's not a criticism. What we look for in the mindset is awareness. Yeah, yeah. No, that's that's a really that's a really good point because uh, you know, you have that your know, fear of failure. You also have the fear of success, which is quite interesting, and that uh, I think can almost be more powerful because you start thinking about oh, all the if I get this and I do that and then I'm successful, then this changes and that changes. And it's amazing how people can talk themselves out of great opportunities that they haven't even been given yet, um, just because or they haven't even like won yet. 
because of that that constant like worry about how things are going to be. We do worry a lot about the future. It definitely it affects mindset. You know, without a doubt. And it's interesting you say that, you know, maybe there's a fear of success. It's I've correlated a little bit years back, not too long ago. I was uh, running a business. We were in the manufacturing of exercise equipment. Uh, and had some partners in that business. And at this time of year was great because that's when we knew our sales would really bump with, with the New Year's resolutions. And there's, you know, many people who would say, you know, if I spend too much time in the gym or lift too much weight, I don't want to get too big and too bulky and, you know, too muscular. There's not much risk of that <laughs> unless you really put the work in. And, and so in terms of fear of success, uh, I don't know. That's not an accident, right? Uh, it's a lot of hard work, as you well know, in the businesses you've built. Uh, no, no, ab- absolutely. And and just going back to what you were just uh, talking about a moment ago, I was just making some notes here. And I think it's it's very important is what you were saying is people don't always know the destination because I don't think people always know their purpose. Like, why am I doing what I'm doing? And it may seem, you know, it may seem, well, it's obvious I do it to get paid, uh, you know, support my family. But really, why are you doing what you're doing? And I think it's a lack of having an identified purpose that often has people kind of sitting in limbo or just stagnating. <clears throat> well, you know, John, what's really interesting, and you mentioned the word distraction, and if there's any great addiction or affliction that all of us face, it is the addiction to distraction. Maybe that dopamine hit or whatever yeah. is referred to chemically from uh, sort of releasing some stress because I'm in pursuit of something maybe that I can't really see. And the uh, interesting thing about the journey and talking to people about what they really want to get to, when people have the courage to speak about it, it can be pretty significant and amazing. But what often happens, John, in my experience personally and with others is, you know, maybe the great, um, the great fear we have, if we use the word fear, is other people. Or put another word, it was uh, said to me by a few others, Michael Gervais, I think, coined it, FOPO, fear of people's opinions, where maybe years Uh, ago it was the dinosaur or, you know, a saber-toothed tiger. Now I'm worried about what someone else is thinking about me, or I'm looking on my social media feed to see if people are approving me and liking me, and I'm always seeking to hit a target that I can't really see. And again, that's not criticism. I couldn't speak to it unless I had the same affliction that I work through or continue to work through. Uh, And so you bring up, you know, realistic points here in early 2023. Yeah, no, it's a, that's a really good point because we do tend to look for external validation. And unf- and I would say, unfortunately, today with social media and everything, we have all these, uh, you know, platforms for validation, if you like, that, yeah, you, people can come addicted to. And and like you said, the dopamine, I mean, there's a, there's research now on, on children, you know, where the, t- TikTok is so addictive, you know, that they have to get like they have to scroll and scroll and scroll just to keep themselves you know, like from being anxious you know they get anxious if they're not getting that dopamine hit and and that's just, and obviously that goes for everybody in in some manner or form so i guess i guess jim james part of this is that we have to as you mentioned earlier intentionality be intentional and i think that's probably and that's it's another buzzword that's been out there but i think it's one that's really really relevant to this year, especially as you start a new year, is the idea of of being intentional. I, mean, I was getting, I believe we were touching on intention. And as yeah. you said, you know, these words become buzzwords or plug words. And, and what I like to think about is that I'm responsible for everything that happens in my life. And look, we just had a glitch in our uh, discussion here. Yeah. Now I could say, well, I wasn't responsible for the glitch, but I'm responsible to you, John, to participate here. Therefore, I will recoil and say, hey, what do you need from me? How, what can I repeat? I want to be responsible for the content or the materials I share with you. And so I think a hard thing for any of us is to accept exactly where we are in our life. Because most of us would say, well, this isn't exactly where I want to be right now. I, there's some other place I thought I was going to be. And it's not to stay where we are. But we can't get to the destination that let's suppose we get clarity around that we want to get to. That destination is impossible to get to if we, let's say it's like an airport, if we leave from the wrong gate. Mm-hmm. So we're responsible for where we are right now and then being intentional about what we are going to work around in terms of the interference that's destined to show up, particularly this time of year. We're all excited. We've got resolutions. we got goals. This is the year it's going to happen. 
until it doesn't. Yeah, yeah, no, and and uh, it's it's just fascinating what you were just saying uh, saying there because the accountability piece and this I think is one of the hardest lessons. I mean, going through a process of self awareness is really important, but I think one of the hardest lessons in life is to take full responsibility and accountability for your own life. You know, that doesn't mean that, you know, things happen to you that are through no fault of your own, but how you react to them or the situations you put yourself in. I think once you take all that on board and you say, Mm -hmm. I'm accountable for where I am today, um, that's a very liberating experience in my mind. Yeah. And, you know, John, as you talk about uh, the world that we operate in, whereby which I suspect as your business model or part of it would have that this portion of this discussion would go out and get posted someplace. And, you know, the temptation would be, hey, how'd it go? How'd we do? What happened to it? And I would like to say that no matter the outcome of it, A, probably like most human beings, I think, well, I could have always said something different, done something better. But let's suppose it doesn't do what you and I hope it does in terms of helping businesses move on or helping people to get some insights that help them. I'd look at that and say, John, I recognize what I could have done differently or how I could be responsible to you if I have the good fortune to do this again, because, okay, I see where I may have um, missed the mark because my responsibility to you is to deliver something that makes a difference for your audience. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think and I think if, if people go into 2023 with that with that mindset of, OK, I'm going to I'm just going to take responsibility for for my own life um, and I'm going to try and become more aware of how I show up. And I think that's the other thing, isn't it? Isn't it, James? I mean, the fact is we have complete control over how we choose to show up. And that's another mindset. So, I mean, who knows, maybe before this, this interview, maybe something was going on in either of our personal lives, right? You know, and we don't feel like doing this and uh, whatever. <laughs> but we owe it. We owe it to show up as our best because we've made a commitment. And I think if you get into that, I think that's a very powerful mindset when you, um, when you decide I'm going to show up as my best. And beautifully put, and it's a choice. And it doesn't mean it's an easy, right? Because in the world of multiple choice, you'll hear me reference the brain quite a bit. But the brain is has been set up to protect us. And it's the cookie monster. I think it about it consumes about 20 to 25% of our daily caloric expenditure. And it's always looking for the path of least resistance. So the easy thing would be to say, well, I don't have time for this. We'll have to reschedule it because that's easier, technically speaking. But to me, it would have been irresponsible to you. Uh, mm-hmm. And I know I'll never have left a discussion like this or it's like exercise. John, I've never left the gym after a workout going, man, I'm really mad at myself for doing that. What a waste <laughs> of time. <laughs> Yeah. No, that is that is one of the, that is one of the things I think. Yeah, that, that I agree with you, and I, I feel like that too about uh, my my hobby. Sometimes it's like, yeah, I, I've never completed one and say, well, that was a mistake. I shouldn't have turned up. I'm normally like, I'm glad I hauled my lazy whatever up here, and actually and did it. Yeah, you you always feel better, and I think that's and and I think that's uh, again that's a. Uh, you have to reorient your way of looking at things sometimes. I mean, in, you know, in, in a work context, maybe maybe you don't want to make those calls. Maybe you don't want to follow up. Maybe you don't want to do all of those things. But, you know, you'll feel a whole heap better if you do. And sometimes it's as simple as that. You know, we were speaking before cameras started to roll and the uh, word hack came up. Yeah. Uh, and you and I were speaking about that, maybe laughing a bit, where maybe you or I asked sometimes of how to sort of game the system or some system, right? And hey, who doesn't want a smoother path? And yet, like anything that's happened in our lives, we've put the effort in, right? And I have to imagine, given the success of what you and your team have built there, it always feels a lot better knowing you left it on the field or the pitch, mm-hmm. as it might say, in your home country. Uh, and earned it doesn't mean you get to keep it right you got to keep playing the game yeah you got to be said yeah and there, there is an old there's an, an old Irish saying was it the uh the long way the long way round is the can be the short way home or something to that effect but well basically yeah everybody's looking for shortcuts today we live in a shortcut culture but um that's another thing to learn is there really really aren't any shortcuts or if you're going to build something or you're going to do something that's really really worthwhile yeah there may be yeah hey we all love a a, a bit of advice or a tip or some way we can we can move things forward a little quickly 
But I think if you're going to really achieve anything uh, meaningful, you have to have the mindset that you have to be in for the long haul. And as I said, unfortunately, it's probably going to take longer than you want because it normally does. Well, you know, to your and to your point, John, it, it may take longer, <clears throat> but, you know, all we have is now mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's always now. And I think what's coming back to you to me about your point there is is clarity. <clears throat> if I can get clear and I'm, I'm making it sound easy and I'm not suggesting it is. No. What is it I'm trying to get to? Why am I trying to get to it? And, and maybe what's helpful to the to the listeners or, or the viewers here is you use the word purpose earlier. And, and maybe that, like many of the words we've spoken of, is sometimes used too freely. From my perspective of helping people drive forward with mindset and what it is helping them get to what they want for their life, I think purpose. And from the perspective of purpose, I'd give three thoughts to uh, your audience here. One is that in pursuit of what it is that we are in pursuit of, it's far bigger than us and it's always bigger than us. Mm -hmm. We never arrive there. Climb, it's a mountain without a top. It's incredibly full to us. Only I can give me mine. Only you can give you yours. I can't give you yours. You can't give me mine. And it's always future oriented. And it doesn't mean that we shouldn't live in the present, but there's always something to strive for, which is a good reason to get out of bed. And if it is a mountain with no top, it's one step, right? I don't know if you can, maybe you can hack a mountain occasionally, (laughs) but you end up going backward. My, my experience, I know how to roll backwards. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, and I, lo- I, I really agree with that. I think the idea of, of hacking and all that, it's, you know, it sounds good, but uh, I mean, occasionally there are, but I think overall you can't go in with that, with that, with that mindset. Um, and I think the other thing is, is, is mindset for, for 2023, maybe for those um, listening who are thinking, what, what would you think would be a good starting point, like a realistic starting point? If you said, I'm just going to do one thing to begin with, I'm, I'm going to focus on one thing. What, what would you suggest that from a mindset point of view? Yeah, love it. Great question. I would say if there were one simple yet difficult thing to do, win your day stack your days because from my perspective your day is your life in miniature right how we live the days turned out to be the weeks the months the quarters the years of our lives and there's a tendency i think for many of us to think you know we'll get to this and we'll get to that and this will happen and that will be in the future and maybe tomorrow and yeah look (laughs) guilty as charged all of us yeah but i know if i can stack my days there's a high probability maybe i'll get four out of seven good for the week and statistically maybe i'm ahead of what i would have been otherwise when i try to cram it all in you know at the end of the week or the end of the month or the end of a quarter and you know with that there's 168 hours a day if you encourage your audience or i would is back of the envelope where do those 168 hours go right if you're lucky enough to sleep eight hours a day eight hours a night seven days a week that's 56 and maybe you work 50, 60, there's still 30, 40 hours in there for exercise and maybe family. There's always time, John, it's just, it's, it's priority. And maybe that comes back to clarity and that comes back to mindset. What am I thinking about? Am I thinking about what I'm thinking about? Am I focusing on what I want or what I don't want? Because where I put my thoughts, my energy, it's going to expand and I'll get more of it. Yeah, no, no, hundred percent. And I love that. I love that about uh, that idea of winning the day. And I think that's a great one to take into twenty twenty three. Is like try and win every day. And if you don't win a day, like admit that you didn't win it, and that you're going to be try harder next time, next tomorrow. Uh, and and I I think that's a fantastic uh, takeaway, James. So all of Max uh, information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Yeah, John, thanks a lot. Uh, The business is set up as uh, what is now considered executive coaching. Worked at what we call the C-suite level, means CEO and executives uh, in organizations that could range from uh, a couple hundred people to a couple thousand people. And what our work is, and this applies also, as I may say, into professional athletes who are looking for a way off the field or off the pitch or off the court. There's correlation in how each of these groups approach life. What we help people recognize is where they are, 
where they want to get to, right? Get that clarity side of things, come back to clarity of where we are and then decide what do we have to do each day? Small steps, because life's very busy, how to integrate specific behaviors and habits and trainings into an already busy day so that the sum total of stacking those days, we talk about stacking Legos, puts mm -hmm. us in the statistical probability closer to what it is that we want. And then I'd add one other piece to that is with a support squad around you. And that would mean whether it's creating an advisory board for yourself, whether there is a board, whether you have people you enroll along the journey to help you, not to make you feel bad. We can all feel bad by ourselves. None of us need help. <laughs> But nudges and reminders, man, this is what you said you wanted. Let's go at it. I'll go walk with you tomorrow if that's what you need, right? A support squad. Set up, set it up for victories. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, having those external people to hold you accountable is always uh, – is always very helpful because that's, and sometimes you need to be careful who you choose because sometimes the people closest to you may not be the best people to keep you on track because <laughs> they may actually not be, they may not 100% support what you're doing because it might reflect on them. So uh, just be careful, be careful, you know, get those people who are invested only in your success and have no other, you know, skin in the game. Yeah, well said, John. Well, All right. So. Well, listen, thanks again, James. Thank you for watching and listening. And I will see you all again very soon. Thank you.